Hello, welcome to another episode of 3 Minute Histology with Jamie Chapman. Uh, today we're continuing our look at cellular staining with hematoxylin and eosin and interpreting uh, what those stains mean. Uh, so in the last episode, we talked about um, the distribution of hematoxylin and eosin staining, acidophilia, basophilia, and interpreting. So we're just going to sort of continue that discussion uh, and having a look at some other cell types and, and referring them to the cellular structure and relating them to, to the staining patterns that we see. So let's start our three minutes. So if you remember, um, we, we talked about the basophilic nature of the nuclei, and we can see the different staining intensities for the different types of nuclei, and we'll talk about what that means uh, probably in another video. But we saw that the basophilia is related to the DNA being stained and the RNA and the nucleolus uh, being present, uh, causing the dark basophilia, and that the acidophilia in the cytoplasm is a direct response to the cytoskeletal proteins. And then we talked about the brush border and the enzymes and the, the microfilm elements being responsible for the acidophilia there. We also talked about the poor staining of mucin, uh, which is one of the, the functions of the goblet cells to produce mucus. Loss of sugars prevents the eosin interacting with the protein backbone and therefore it's relatively unstained. But we can begin our, our interpretation of some of these other cells as well. So you can see these sort of elongated cells uh, here. They've got the elongated nuclei. And then they've got these very acidophilic cytoplasms running away. Um, these are actually smooth muscle cells. And that helps you to identify them because of their very acidophilic cytoplasms and their elongated nuclei. You can see these other uh, cell types within this loose connective tissue beneath this um, simple columnar epithelium here. You can see that there's not a lot of cytoplasm in a lot of these, and a lot of these are actually lymphocytes, which have large nuclei uh, in relation to their cytoplasm, so they, they don't have very many. If we have a look at this cell, however, you can see it's got a, a very a basophilic nucleus, but its cytoplasm is also basophilic. So that would likely indicate that there's lots of rough endoplasmic reticulum or uh, polyribosomes present. And this is actually a plasma cell. So a plasma cell is responsible for producing lots and lots of antibodies. And so it has one little function. It's a little, little manufacturing cell that just pumps out the same protein over and over and over. So if you were to see an electron micrograph of this cell, uh, it would look like... Um, big round nucleus with a cytoplasm filled with rough endoplasmic reticulum. So what I wanted to also point out was we'll go over to the pancreas. If we have a look at the pancreas, the pancreas is also another uh, organ that has cells which produce lots of protein. But it results, because of the different parts of the cell are performing slightly different functions, it results in a slightly different staining pattern. So if we have a look at these cells, these cells are typically pyramid shaped. So they have a big flat base and then a, a pointed little top. And at the base, we've got their basal nucleus. And then you can see it's quite basophilic around the base of the cell. And if we were to see an electron micrograph of that, in which I've got one, uh, an example of one here, you can see that the base of the cell, we've got all of this rough endoplasmic reticulum, and therefore that's accounting for the basophilic staining, so the staining with hematoxylin. The top of the cell has the secretory granules with the protein, the enzymes that's being produced. Because it's protein, very acidophilic and um, uh, time has just gone very acidophilic and therefore stains with uh, uh, eosin. So if we have a look again, we can see this basophilic basal region, acidophilic apical region, and that you can really begin to interpret uh, staining patterns and then begin to um, identify the, the composition of these cells. Anyway, that's just a little snapshot or quick snapshot of uh, using H&E staining and interpreting slides at the cellular level.